peripheral arterial disease affects more than 10 million people in the United States. In advanced stages, it may cause claudication and critical leg ischemia, defined as the presence of pain at rest in the leg or foot, ischemic ulcers, or gangrene. The presence of peripheral arterial disease leads to substantial morbidity in individual patients and results in early mortality. It also incurs high costs for the health care system. Because of its critical impact on health, accurate diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease is important. Careful history taking and physical examination are always required. However, because examiners may differ in their ability to palpate pulses and because up to 10% of the general population may have congenital absence of the dorsalis pedis pulse, a more objective method to evaluate the peripheral circulation is needed when peripheral arterial disease is suspected. Measurement of the ankle brachial index is a simple, accurate, and generally reliable method for the diagnosis and evaluation of peripheral arterial disease. Some of the known risk factors for peripheral arterial disease include smoking, diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, a family history of the disease, and advanced age. Indications for measuring the ankle brachial index include screening for atherosclerosis, evaluation of leg pain, and evaluation of lower extremity ischemia. Consider lower extremity ischemia when there is a history of claudication which may occur at the buttock, thigh, or calf levels, pain at rest, particularly in the foot, or foot ulcers or gangrene. In addition, the ankle brachial index is indicated in the evaluation of vascular compromise in patients with lower extremity trauma. It may also be useful to estimate prognosis in patients with diffuse vascular disease and to evaluate the success of an interventional or surgical procedure such as angioplasty, stenting, or lower extremity bypass surgery. Although there are no absolute contraindications for measuring the ankle brachial index, the presence of excruciating pain in the leg or foot may deter the physician from performing this procedure. If the patient has known deep venous thrombosis, this procedure may dislodge the clot which could then embolize. If the vessels to be examined are calcified and thus incompressible, as in elderly patients or those with long-standing diabetes or with dialysis-dependent renal failure, the ankle blood pressure readings may be affected. However, these conditions are not absolute contraindications to measuring the ankle brachial index. In order to measure the ankle brachial index, you will need the following equipment. A continuous wave Doppler device, ultrasonic gel, and a SMICMO magnometer with a blood pressure cuff. The Doppler ultrasound probe should produce a signal of 8 to 9 megahertz in order to examine peripheral blood vessels. Handheld Doppler devices are generally adequate to measure the ankle brachial index. The diameter of the inner bladder of the blood pressure cuff should be 40% of the limb circumference. The examination should be performed with the patient supine and in a warm and comfortable environment. To measure the ankle brachial index, you will first need to measure the arm blood pressure with the Doppler probe. It is important to choose a sphygmo manometer cuff of the appropriate size. This is placed over the upper arm. Palpate the brachial pulse and apply gel with the probe at the site where the pulse is felt. Place the Doppler probe lightly on the gel at a 60 degree angle towards the patient's head. Inflate the cuff rapidly until the brachial artery flow ceases, no further Doppler signal, and continue for about 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above this value. Following this, deflate the blood pressure cuff slowly at 2 to 4 millimeters of mercury per second in order to note the systolic value. 
you can then wipe the gel from the patient's skin and repeat the procedure on the other arm. Following measurement of the systolic blood pressure in the upper extremities, measure the systolic blood pressure in the lower extremities. First, place the cuff above the ankle. The dorsalis pedis artery is located initially by palpation or identified by Doppler alone if no pulse is felt. You should obtain an arterial Doppler signal, which can be monophasic, biphasic, or triphasic. Apply the Doppler probe to this area and inflate the blood pressure cuff to 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above the level of flow cessation. Then slowly deflate the cuff until you hear the sound of the systolic pressure and record it. Repeat the procedure for the posterior tibial artery. Once you have completed the measurement, Remove the cuff and place it over the contralateral leg. Repeat the procedure for the contralateral dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial arteries. To calculate the ankle brachial index, divide the systolic blood pressure from the ankle by the systolic blood pressure from the arm. Use the higher systolic pressure from the dorsalis pedis or posterior tibial artery for the calculation of the ankle blood pressure. Also, use the higher brachial systolic pressure as a lower arm blood pressure may be due to arterial occlusive disease in one of the upper extremities. A normal ankle brachial index at rest ranges from 0.91 to 1.3. Above 1.3, you should suspect that the patient has incompressible vessels. Decreases in the ankle brachial index are consistent with peripheral arterial disease. Mild to moderate peripheral arterial disease usually produces an ankle brachial index in the range of 0.41 to 0.9. Below 0.4, severe peripheral arterial disease is usually present. Depending on the presentation and symptoms of patients, you may decide to perform additional investigations such as angiography, magnetic resonance imaging, or duplex ultrasound scanning. There are limitations to the measurement of the ankle brachial index. These include the presence of a subclavian artery stenosis. If bilateral, this will falsely elevate the ankle brachial index. Calcified and incompressible vessels in the lower extremities will also falsely elevate the ankle brachial index. These conditions are often found in the elderly, in patients with long-standing diabetes, and in patients with renal failure who are on dialysis. Measurement of the ankle brachial index represents a non-invasive and objective way to diagnose peripheral arterial disease. This test has been reported to have more than 90% sensitivity and more than 95% specificity for the diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease. This test may be performed in the physician's office and is a helpful adjunct for diagnosing peripheral arterial disease.